Hello everyone. I'm going to uh, talk briefly about retrofitting uh, <clears throat> factory style roller lifters to a uh, small block Chevy, uh, generation one small block Chevy. This happens to be a, a uh, 400 uh, with, a, with a SCAD uh, 6 inch rod kit. Uh, so I've done a little prep to the block and what I've done here is I've used the uh, spider as a template in order to drill some holes right in the block. A little uh, eighth of an inch pilot hole followed up by a uh, <clears throat> um, about a quarter inch hole and then uh, you know tap it you know uh, tap it uh, with the correct thread size <clears throat> and then these uh, 5 16 studs. I just bought some uh, threaded rod, cut it to the right length, which is about an uh, inch and a quarter, and those get threaded into the uh, main oil galley. Now, I was, I was very careful to put a 3 8 rod in the oil galley so that I, you know, so that there's no chance of these um, studs that were inserted, you know, actually bottoming out and blocking the uh, oiling for the uh, cam bearings. Because it just so happens that these three studs just happen to be directly, perfectly over the oil hole for the cam bearings. So, that's done properly. And, you know, in order to get the spacing right with its spider, you know, it's necessary to use a, a nut. It just so happens that a nut, uh, just a regular, you know, grade 8 uh, hardened uh, 5 sixteenths nut bottomed out provides the correct spacing for the spider. So, uh, so that, that's, that's how you, you prep the block. And then obviously the um, spider would be held on by a, another nut. Now I'm going to be using uh, nylock nuts in order to make sure that they don't uh, back out. So, so now um, we're going to talk a little bit about the lifters. And you know, th there's uh, you know, many ways to accomplish this. This is my way, and there are other people who've uh, said this is you know more economical than retrofit. Uh, lifters. Well, it's not. It's, it's definitely retrofit style link bar hydraulic lifters like this one right here. Uh, it, uh, you know, are definitely more economical. And the reason why is because the, the type of, of GM lifter that you, roller lifter that, that you need to use was uh, from a, a Chevy V6 motor that wasn't really that popular, so these lifters are expensive. And buying these roller lifters is about the same price as buying the link bar lifters. So then you, you might say to yourself, well, why do it? And uh, for me, the reason was is that these, these link bar lifters are very heavy. You know, you have the weight of the link bar, which can get a little noisy. And then you also have all this extra metal lifters are, are, are you know considerably larger so if you, you know if you're going to be spinning the motor you know to, to six grand or above on a regular basis you know the, the weight really counts so the reason to do this is not a, an economical or financial one it's to really cut down on weight this this GM V6 lifter weighs about uh, you know slightly more than a, than a traditional flat type of flat tappet hydraulic lifter. And there's also, you know, I've also heard some people express concern about the oiling. And uh, the oil galley uh, hole is, is uh, almost, almost perfectly aligned. And it's definitely, you know, within, you know, close, in, it's close enough. It's different, but it's definitely close enough. And so let's, let's talk about, you know, one of these Chevy V6 hydraulic lifters. Now it's not it's not the common Chevy V6 hydraulic lifter 
uh, like the, the 4.3. It's not that. It's from a, a different Chevy. I think it's a 3.1 uh, Chevy. Anyway, here's the roller lifter. And the, the roller lifter, you know, goes in the block just like uh, every lifter does. And it hits the camshaft, and then the dog bone, you know, goes over to keep it kind of located properly. And that's how it works. The dog, as the camshaft rotates, the dog bone, um, you know, keep that uh, lifter from uh, twisting off its axis and, and and not being a roller any longer. So um, now the now the dog, you know, in order to get these dog bones to fit in the block, uh, you really have to do a considerable amount of grinding to get them to fit. You could see difference here. And on the back side, you know, on the side that's close to the motor, you really got to, you know, get the grinder out or or the sanding disc or whatever and, and give these a good grind. Now, now these dog bones are, are made of a very uh, durable metal. It's not, it's not a very soft metal. These are these are uh, pretty, uh, you know, pretty a pretty hard metal. So you know, grinding on them is they really take a lot of grinding. So um, I've run these before in a different motor, and even though they're they're grinded pretty good, you know, you you won't have any problem. Uh, there's not really a lot of stress on these uh, things. Uh, dog bones, I guess they're called, so it's not really a lot of stress on them. It, it just needs to stop the lifter from rotating, which is, which is you know, very limited amount of force. So, so the way it works is these dog bones go into place, and the spider goes in and holds that, you know, dog bone down, and uh, that's how it works, I and mean, I think you kind of get the idea. This can be done, um, you know, for about the same price as, uh, or maybe slightly more, than a retrofit roller kit. However, uh, this is much lighter. The, the the retrofit lifters are heavy, and if you're going to be turning your motor above 6,000, this is the way to go. And since this uh, engine is going to be, you know, the cam in this engine and, and with the six-inch stroke, it's going to be finishing up at about 6,500, and and uh, having you know taken some weight off the valve train uh, by using this method. Uh, certainly doesn't hurt. So that's my uh, quick video on how to do this. Uh, you know, it's, it's a little intimidating at first, and I would just caution anyone uh, not to grind the block too much. You're you're, you're much better off uh, taking a, a, most of the material out of the dog bones. Uh, I had to do a little bit of clearancing on the block in a couple of areas, but it's it's minimal. Uh, because you know the 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 uh, valley of this uh, motor, um, you know, if you get some core shift, it can be pretty thin. And if you if you grind too much, you can you can definitely get some cracks. So uh, you know, even even if you have a, a good block that doesn't have much core shift, it's not necessary to grind on the block. You just need to uh, do a little bit of clearancing in these corners where where the material is actually built up pretty thick and you want to take most of the material out of the dog bone. That's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed my video.